Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone out there in Facebook land. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Lewis Reyes, and I'm your exchange's senior enlisted advisor. Today, we're going to have a little, little treat, right? a little live performance, and we're also get, going to get to know our guest a little bit better. But before we get to him, Julie, how are you doing today? Hey, Chief, I'm doing pretty good. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing good. We're a little behind here. I had some technical difficulties, but I think we figured it out now. But let's get right to it, Julie, by introducing our guest. <laughs> We are so excited to have today's musical guest with us. We connected to him thanks to our good friends at Bose. So our guest today, he started writing songs at age 10, and he has been growing his career ever since. He's open for big names like Brett Eldridge and Dwight Yoakam. He's here today to chat with us about his personal military heroes and lift our spirits with his music. Please give a big chief chat round of applause for country singer Styles Hari. Hey, how are you guys? How's it going, Chief and Julie? Thank you guys for having me here today. Uh, I'm excited to, to join the show here. Hey, we are so excited to have you, Styles. And for everybody watching, please drop us a note in the comments and let us know where you're watching from. Share some love with Styles, And if you have any questions for him, you can leave those too, and we will read them live. You can also start a watch party so you can enjoy this live interview and good music with your friends. And if you're not already following our page, why the heck not? We've been saying it for three months now. Follow <laughs> us. That way you know who's up and coming on Chief Chat. Hey, so let's get this going, Styles. Thanks for coming on the show. Where are you coming to us from, and how's your summer so, been? So? so I did my homework on this one. So uh, I, I came uh, back to my hometown here in Ohio, um, uh, and I'm coming to you from my my old man's garage here in Ohio, and uh, came back here last night and stayed up late going through all his military archives. So it was really cool. Once again, thank you guys for doing this. Not only was it's gonna it's awesome to be on here with y'all, but it was a really cool thing being able to jump back through his archives and see all of the, the photos and all the cool stuff and what it means. And I learned a lot last night. So this is cool. And that's great. So you you mentioned your dad. He's obviously a military hero who is near and dear to you personally. Tell us about your dad and his service to our country. And I think you've also told us you have some close friends who served as well. So kind of just explain your connection to the military. Yeah, so uh, my dad uh, was in the Navy, United States Navy, and uh, he was an E-5, and uh, I, I learned that last night as well. Um, so yeah, so he was in the Navy. He, uh, uh, I got a lot more information here that I can pull up whenever y'all are ready. Yeah, uh, no, let's, but, now's the time. Let's hear it. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So I'm going to jump right in. Sorry, this thing, let me put this guitar down, so we'll get right in here, so. Yeah. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, here we go, okay. So this is the first thing, let me get this thing. So he's got this, this was the, uh, he was Team Spirit 88 uh, in Korea. Uh, he did, this was something he wanted me to highlight on. Um, so let me see here. It says, uh, he, if you notice, we did the sticky notes, the whole nine in here. Uh, <laughs> so this was him, I guess on the flight deck, or flight deck operations. So here's a photo of them here. Raise uh, up just a little bit. He, oh, which okay. So which one's your dad? He's the the, uh, the one in the lower center, so bottom Low. center, with Got the it. weird what? helmet thing on. <laughs> <laughs> and what's his what's his name? Uh, so his name is Mark Howley. Mark. All right. Thank you, Mark. And, uh, That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> and this is uh, Chief. You probably will know more about this than I do. Um, this is his shellback card. Oh wow. Oh, that is cool. That's cool. Yeah, so oh, this wow. is, is uh, and I think, Chief, if you could help me explain more about this. I believe a, a, a United States um, serviceman reaches this when they, or they get this card when they cross the United States equator on a naval ship. I've heard, I've heard that um, from, I used to work with Navy personnel, and I heard there is like a tradition that they do when you cross the equator, but I, I'm not super familiar with it, but that's pretty cool that card there and I, I there's some other traditions they do so i would have to get some like navy people out there any navy people watching right now put it in the comments what's your tradition when you cross the equator because i know there's one and i'm sure that's part of it yeah that's and, pretty uh, neat if you get that when you cross so that's that's awesome <laughs> yeah so uh like i said there's a bunch of photos on here but he and one other thing i thought was cool is he he did have his battle e um okay. his first ship was the 
the USS, um, sorry, let me pull this real quick. This sticky sure. Note. Um, so his first <laughs> ship was the, the USS San Bernardino LST 1189. His second ship was the USS uh, Hunley A AS31 subtender. Um, so I thought that was a pretty cool thing. Here's another uh, little, little cool thing here um, was some Australian money. Um, when he was in Australia, <laughs> uh, you know, he's got money from, that was the only thing I came across was like, he had coins and money from all these different countries. And pictures <laughs> and, um, but one cool part about this is my dad was, uh, uh, before he met my mom, he was previously married to another, another lady. And, but he lived in Mer he was married in Australia. So he lived out in Australia for three years when he got out of the Navy, um, before he decided to come back to our hometown here in Medina. Uh, back home and then start a pipe fitting company because he was a welder um, mm -hmm. in the Navy. And uh, then he started uh, now what I grew up knowing as Mobile Site Mechanical, which is my, my old man's company. And then uh, here's another big old book of uh, things that I don't know. Wow. That I'm about. <laughs> but uh, I'll tell you what, I got all the, the um, sticky notes here. So <laughs> I got honorable discharge papers. That's DD good. 214, um, yep. a Battle E, a Sea Service Deployment Ribbon, National Defense Service Medal. Um, yeah, so, and this is kind of just like, I don't know if you guys can't really see it, but uh, <laughs> these are kind of just all his cer certificates and qualifications that he, and one thing I thought was really cool that he did that I can't believe knowing my dad that he did this, like this is crazy. <laughs> that he organized all everything he's ever done all the way back to like his like kindergarten like honor students <laughs> like <laughs> he so kept he it like, all, all That's qualifications so great. like this is like all just qualifications from nuclear welding to just i mean i don't even know there's a lot of stuff in here so um i thought it was cool i never knew all this stuff and i said man like and this guy's smarter than he looks like who is this guy i don't know <laughs> You know, so like, how, how many years did your dad serve? Uh, actually, hey, how many years did you serve? Four years, six months, and 23 days. Four years, six months, and 23 days. Man, he, Down you know, he to the day. Day. Exactly. So you mentioned your dad's DD-214 with the honorable discharge. So I don't know if your dad knows this and you can share this with him, but he's able to shop with the military exchanges online. Um, he has an online tax-free benefit waiting for him because of his honorable discharge. So that's a hey, pretty new benefit. He did not know Bring him on. Bring him over here. <laughs> come, on, come on, old man. Let's see you. Come on. <laughs> don't be shy. Be shy. A little bit. A, a little bit. Oh, there hi. Hi, hi there. Good to see you. So thank you for Mark. your service, Mark. Yeah, thank you, Mark. You're Appreciate welcome. you. Thanks for so joining what, us. What else? Stuff. Hey, what's the other tradition, Mark, when you cross the equator? Isn't there something else? Don't they like throw you overboard so you can like go swim in the water? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a uh, best thing you need to do is, I guess, search it online. It, you're, so before you cross the equator, you're called a polywog. And then after you cross the equator on a Navy ship, you're called a shellback. So <laughs> it's quite the initiation. Have it. <laughs> uh, you should have seen, I've seen some photos of the initiation. There was like weird men dressed as women. <laughs> it was weird. I don't know. It was like maybe just like tribal stuff. Like, and it was, it was cool. It was like, I was like, what is this? Like, this is like a totally another world, you know? <laughs> Yeah. That's awesome. That is great. That is so great. If any of our Navy friends out there want to speak to that. Um. <laughs> <laughs> got a lot of love, a lot of love coming in. But you thank are you for your service, Mark. In case, like Julie said, in case you're not aware, you can shop online tax free. So thank you. Exchange.com, shopmyexchange.com, Marine Corps Exchange.com, whatever website you prefer, you can go on there and shop tax free for the rest of your life. So take advantage of those deals and they ship to your house. That's your benefit. You well, earned it. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah, so there you go. A little uh, little treat. Like I said, I, I, dro I drove back uh, in from Nashville back to Ohio because I, I really thought, you know, I could have had them send photos or whatever, but I just wanted to have more of the personal experience with them going through yeah. the stuff. That was the whole point of the thing, right? Uh, yeah, thank you for making time to do that. I that's that's really great and and so generous of you to use your time that way to make this live engagement even better. That's people love seeing 
military photographs, old photographs and hearing those stories. And thank you for doing that. We, we appreciate yeah. it. Very generous with your time. I, so think, hey, I think Julie, I think he learned more about his dad. He told he, we learned something, but I think he learned a lot more. Yes. And that's what I was saying. That, this is really cool. Like, and one other thing that I wanted to point out too, and like my dad told me last night, he's like, don't, don't point that out. That's not really, uh, okay. <laughs> you know, but, but I'm gonna, I'm going, I'm a big tattoo guy. You know, I, I, I love tattoos and, uh, one thing that I thought was really cool is uh, two, he has these tattoo certifications somewhere in here. It's like like a little thing that like states where like where he got the tattoo. And one was like certified bamboo and like chisel, bamboo and chisel in the Philippines. Uh, he got a social security number on this side just in case he got lost. Uh, and I thought that was so cool. I'm like, man, like that must have been brutal. Like I can't even imagine a bamboo stick and poke. <laughs> oh my God. Is that you your know, next so tattoo? Hey, Styles, is that going to be your next tattoo? You going to go bamboo style with some ink? I, I, I don't know if I'm that tough, dude. <laughs> So, as you know, Styles, we have soldiers, airmen, sailors, Marines, Coasties, and military families watching from all over the world. Do you have any words of thanks for, or, or inspiration to share with these folks watching today? Absolutely. Uh, you know, I just want to say for me, me not being a serviceman, um, I can only express my greatest gratitude um, for everybody, whoever you are, wherever you're watching from, um, you know, man or woman. Uh, thank you so much for your service. Guys like me appreciate you so much because it takes people like you uh, to let us live free out here and do what we love to do. And I'll tell you what, if it wasn't for people like you, I couldn't play music and do what I love. So thank you for your service from the bottom of my heart. Uh, and I, I wish I could meet every single one of you. But this is the closest thing to that. So thank you for your service out there. Hey, that's, that's awesome. So let's get, let's get this going. Let's talk about music. How did you get started? In this business well okay so there was a country band um that used to rehearse in my dad's shop not this shop uh, it was a, the shop that i grew up in or the house with the shop that i grew up in uh, or the other side of this town i'm in now uh there was a country band that performed there i grew up on rock and country music you know my mom loved acdc and uh some older <laughs> country and uh and my dad was mostly uh a country guy besides I think uh, ACDC and a few others. Um, anyways, this country band would practice in the shop and it kind of lit a spark in me. You know, I, I love like for some reason I was magnetized to these these hillbillies out in the garage, you know, making noise. <laughs> and uh, uh, my rhythm guitar player, uh, Dan, who's actually still in my band today. We were friends since kindergarten. Oh. Uh, we had a band. We started it in fourth grade. Uh, the drummer from that country band in my dad's garage got me a drum kit. And Dan, my rhythm guitar player today, uh, his dad got him a guitar. And Dan's brother uh, got a bass. And we just kind of threw this thing together. And then we started this band. And we were playing rock music. You know how it goes in, in school. It wasn't cool to play country music. No, I mean, we don't want to. We're, we're, we're skateboarding punk rockers only. You know, that's all we're doing. Like, that's it. You know, no country over here. Like, and, you know, and it's just funny how it developed over time. But so that's kind of where the start happened. You know, I remember and when, when I say I wrote my first song at 10, you know, we definitely wrote a song at 10 years old. Uh, it was called Fly Away. And it was terrible. I, I, I will not even play it. I will not even talk any more about it. But that was my first song that I ever written. Uh, and then as time went on, uh, things developed. And uh, it's funny how things come back around and uh, country music ended up finding me. And, uh, and I was actually pipe fitting, you know, my dad being a welder and stuff like that. He got me, a, I was working for his company and then uh, working for another company in the union. And I just finally said, you know what, screw this. I don't love it. You know, I don't love what I'm doing. It was like really rough for me to get up and go to work. Like I'm not going to lie. Like it took, I would be like trying to find any excuse not to go to work. <laughs> you know, it's like, cause all I wanted to do was play music. And, uh, that turned into me saving up money and packing up and moving to Nashville. And it kind of all snowballs from there, you know? Chief, you're on mute. I'm, I'm muted. I'm muted. I don't want to interrupt. You know <laughs> what I mean? Because then it pops up. But a great, great story. I also know you have a new single called Busy Man, right? Just released last week. Can you tell us about that song, the inspiration behind it? And of course, you know, you got to play for us, right? You got to. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, uh, 
that song is so, it's like probably uh, two songs I've written in Nashville so far, far over the last four years. And I, I read a lot of songs, like to put it in perspective, I write close to on average two to three songs a week. Uh, and for me, Busy Man uh, is one of two of one of my favorite songs I've ever written in Nashville. I wrote it with uh, my buddies Jordan Fletcher um, and Shane Miner, who have also uh, great hit country songs that y'all probably heard before. Um, but the meaning behind the song uh, is kind of what it what it says, "Busy Man." You know, it's a uh, don't spend all the time doing something that doesn't matter. You know, make time for the things that matter and don't stay so busy, man. And that was kind of the, that hook, that phrase kind of just uh, turned it into this whole thing, you know? Well, that, hey, you're gonna get a chance to hear it, Styles? Absolutely, man. Here, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll <laughs> I was waiting for you, right to, I was waiting for you to get the guitar and bring it out, because I was like, all right. <laughs> yeah, I just want to do, uh, Make sure it's uh, oh, yeah, make sure. I, I try not to have the guitar too much, uh, just because I've noticed in the past sometimes it can be a distraction, you know. Hey, that garage floor, that garage looks nice. That's a distraction right now. I'm like, man, I want to go. <laughs> hey, garage looks wanna, good. I'll, th I'll throw you. I'll throw you a little little view here. I don't know if I can flip this. Let's see. I don't think it'll. Oh wait, yeah, it will let me flip. So here's a little view. Woo! Look at this. <laughs> oh wow yeah you had some commenters wanting to see what else y'all had in there that's wow that's incredible <laughs> yeah, a couple couple race cars you know the all that good jazz oh and for all you bow hunters and fishermen out there all the deer heads are in the other room <laughs> northern ohio big bucks i got you covered maybe you'll show us later <laughs> <laughs> okay cool see ya I'm sorry, this thing tends to just jump out of tune. The smallest little bit of change in humidity, temperature, uh, it's just, I think it's a little fun. And it just totally monkeys with my ear a little bit uh, <laughs> if I'm playing it out of tune. So here we go. This one's called Busy Man. Hey, 
busy man. Don't stay so busy, man. Make time with things, man. Can't turn it to time backwards. Take it from a busy man. You sure want to miss it, man. There's a boy you know you're gonna see it, man. So busy, man. Yeah, boy, you know you're gonna miss it, man. So busy, man. Hey, thank you. That was so good, Styles. That was really, really good. You sounded fantastic. Probably <laughs> you out of we've had quite a few musical guests and, and you sounded really, really good. Like good audio sounded so great. Um, you're getting some great feedback on Facebook. Lots of loves and likes. I wanted to share some of the feedback with you. Um, Sally Cook says, awesome dad stuff. Thanks for your service and sharing from, she's from watching from Fort Bragg, North Carolina. She also wants to know if Styles is your real first name. She thinks it's awesome for someone in the music industry. Okay, that actually, that is a really cool question. And I was hoping that somebody would ask that question. So <laughs> it all ties back to the military thing. So yes, Styles is my first name. My full name is Styles Nathan Howery. And my name came from my dad's best friend in the Navy. Uh, I have met him before. Uh, his name is Styles. So that's where my name comes from, guys. Sweet. Uh, all trails back to this military thing, I, I promise you. That's <laughs> like great. Maverick, like Maverick and Goose on Top Gun. How just give a name out? <laughs> yeah. That's great, Styles. That's great. You have, um, you have people watching from all over the world. I know Scott Air Force Base is watching. Marie is watching from Texas. Chip Wilson says, awesome. Nanette says, thank you for your service, Mark. Thank you, Styles, for sharing with us. And then Chip Wilson also wants to know what kind of guitar you use. What brand is that? Right. So this is a Gibson. Uh, Gibson. J45. So before this, a lot of people, uh, if, they, if they do ever get a chance to check out my, my previous videos or stuff like that, for example, a music video that we got to shoot in Florida Keys, uh, I'm using a Martin Performance Artist Series in that video. But Mr. Okay. Rand Travis himself signed that one, so I decided to hang that one up on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> you retired that one? <laughs> yeah, I retired that one after that. <laughs> hey. Good deal. <laughs> A style. So you, you you brought up earlier that you write about two to three songs a week, which to me it's a lot. But you started writing music when you were about ten years old, which I can't imagine a typical ten year old's doing that. So what's your songwriting process like? Who or what inspires you? Okay, so the the process um, back then I didn't know the process. I was just smashing words together, and that's why I'm embarrassed to share any of those songs. Uh, but moving forward down the line now uh, in Nashville. Writing two to three songs a week is actually a very common thing for a lot of writers and a lot of guys in Nashville. These guys that write more, uh, definitely more than that, uh, at these publishing houses and stuff. And um, one thing I would, you know, like to share with the people that a lot of times they don't probably know is uh, the music industry. For me, you know, being a middle class blue collar kid that grew up in a little doubt on the map in Dino, Ohio. Uh, Finally making it out to a big town like that. Uh, it was really cool to see that, hey, like the music industry is, is very similar to corporate America or any other industry that you might want to get into to, except for the networking part. That comes a little mm -hmm. tricky, like trying to find the right people in such a big town. But once you get there and you get in, get in, the, in the scene and in the things, it kind of, it does a lot of different things for different people. For me, it kind of, it brought me in. It felt like home without even actually being from there. It felt like, man, this is where my roots need to be. This is where I need to plant now. Um, so to bring it full circle back to um, the songwriting process, you know, after being there a while, I got in the hang of things. And basically the most, the com I would say most common way uh, that a lot of my friends and people write songs is, uh, so I keep like a notes in my phone, like the little 
uh, notes yeah. app. Uh, I, I take song titles. I start with a title, whatever it may be. For example, uh, the song I just played, Busy Man. It was, uh, that whole title came about um, due to, I was in the Key West Songwriters Festival. My dad called me and he said, hey, busy man, what you up to? Like this, that, and I was like, man, like, uh, that, that's a title, you know, that, I, I took it down on my phone and boom, it, it all develops into that, that kind of thing. Uh, another song that I'm, I'm gonna play here later is I Don't Even Know That Guy. It's like, that came from looking a picture of myself in high school. I'm like, man, I don't even know that guy. And that, that once again, that, uh, you know, that title, uh, I take that, put it in the phone, then, end up going to like a publishing house was basically just a building or yeah, there's office rooms or whatever that, you know, a couple guys would go into with guitars or a laptop and a keyboard. And we all get together and say, Hey man, what are you feeling today? You know? And uh, you know, you try to, you write it together. Most of the, most uh, the, of the time you're writing with, you know, two to five guys or people or women or whatever, but you're writing with two to five people. Uh, and you start with the hook, uh, the title, and then you say, hey, are we doing a, a slow song, a ballad, a mid-tempo, an up-tempo, uh, an anthem? Like, what do y'all feel today? And they're like, hey, I've been working on this melody, you know, whatever it might be. And then that kind of gets passed around, hot potatoed around the circle and boom, boom, boom. And about sometimes you, you don't get it. And sometimes it pops out in 45 minutes and sometimes it takes five hours. So <laughs> that's most of the time when you get a couple brains on it, it, it comes right together. Excellent. Um, we would love to hear another track from you. Can you tell us about whatever gets you there? Okay, so whatever gets you there. Uh, so I wrote that with uh, myself, my producer, Bobby Hub, uh, another awesome writer in town, Mr. Jeremy Bussey, and one of my close friends that's, uh, that we kind of crossed paths along the way before we moved to Nashville, and he moved out there, uh, Mr. James Kelly, and now he's been a writer on a lot of my music uh, going out there. But it was kind of like the whole thing of everyone's got their own thing, you know, it, mm -hmm. you know, whatever gets you there. Hey, you know, like <laughs> everybody do their own thing. Don't worry about what everyone else thinks, whether it's a, you know, maybe it's uh, a little smoke of the cheech, a drink, uh, <laughs> a, a, a night out on the town, a night in on the couch with your wife or whatever, you know, everyone's got their own thing. So it kind of, Hey, whatever gets you there. Uh, and that's, once again, title manifested into this cool little thing. We want to hear it. You can you uh, you ready to play it for us? Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you. I just got to wet the whistle a little here. <laughs> Fish on a wall like a billboard sign. Say, take a deep breath, it's gonna be all right. Yeah, we're gonna be all right. Whatever gets you there, whatever gets you high. Blow it your boat, whatever cleaves your sky. It might be a drink or a kiss, prayer on your lips. Everybody's got a heaven somewhere. Worry about me, oh, but anyone thinks would it get you there? You can play by the rules, live a blueprint of life, twist every turn till you run out of wine. Everybody's got to find one on Saturday night. Thank you, my just found my whatever gets you there, whatever gets you high. Floats and boat, but it clears your sky. Might be a drink or a kiss, prayer on your lips. Everybody's got a heaven somewhere. Worry about me, oh, but anyone thinks it's you there. Whatever gets you there, whatever gets you high. Blokes and bows, we can brood it tonight. Ah, whatever gets you there, whatever gets you out. Blokes and bows, whatever gets you out. Might be a drink or a kiss, a prayer on your lips. Everybody's got a heaven somewhere. Don't worry about me. 
Anyone thinks what he gets in there. It might be plain or tall, wish on a star, girl, flower in her head. Whatever gets you there, whatever gets you high, whatever floats your boat, baby, he's your sky. It might be a drink or a kiss, prayer on your lips, everybody's got a heaven somewhere. Worry about me, or anyone who thinks it gets you there. Yeah, don't worry about me or anyone who thinks what it did today. What it get you today? What it get you there? Hey, thank you. Thank you. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> that awesome. That was awesome. A lot of a lot of likes and loves out here uh, from people all over. You know, Shania. I don't, I don't think you mentioned her earlier. She's joining from Fort Bliss. Uh, um, Fort Buchanan, Puerto Rico's in the house. They're watching all over the place. I love it. Yeah, we have a question from uh, Richard Wong. He he asked, "What's it been like not being able to play for a live audience during this pandemic?" Yeah. I will say it has been very heartbreaking for me and the guys. Um, you know, this year we were excited. Uh, we had a lot of really cool stuff in the works. Uh, one show in particular uh, we had July 10th. Uh, it was a big festival, a lot of great artists on it. Uh, but uh, some of the artists that were on it were uh, Riley Green, Old Dominion, Luke Combs uh, was the headliner. It was a three-day festival. Jason Aldean on Friday, Alan Jackson on Saturday. So we were part of a really cool thing. That's one show in particular, with along with many others, uh, that we were bummed about. You know, me and the guys are extremely bummed. I mean, this is what we live for. You know, we don't yeah. we don't do this music thing and travel all over uh, in a bus with a bunch of dudes all sweaty and close quarters because we want to. It's because we do it for the people. Like genuinely, there is no other feeling uh, than being like we go to the shows and even like the meet and greets after or before the shows are messages of the people out there that, you know, the songs are getting them through something. You know, I had a, I had a buddy from military, that, or my buddy from high school was in the military. It was the first record I put out. I said, hey, hey man, uh, you know, I was in, uh, when, when I was in Iraq, your, your song, your song, your first EP got me through, man. Like just brought me back to my hometown. It's like, but it's stuff like that, you know, that's just one example, but it's stuff like that that really keeps us going. That's why we're doing this. And uh, for us not to be able to be out there on the road with the fans and the people in, um, you know, those kind of nights of that what we live for, really, and sharing the songs and all those people bringing all the songs alive throughout the summer. Uh, it's been hard, you know, really hard, very heartbreaking. But the good part is we have technology. So we're still able to get a little bit of, that uh with stuff like this so wherever you're at wherever you're coming from uh, i know i can't see everybody uh, but wherever you're at uh, on this crazy rock uh, that's spinning around uh during these times uh i just want to say hopefully this brings a little bit of light to you and keep your head up uh we're all in this together we're going to get through this um so that's kind of my thought on it i'm going to continue to do more stuff like this and once again i know I, I, this is not me plugging or any of that stuff I, i'm genuinely yeah, serious. Good. i cannot thank uh you know the united states military exchange and you guys enough for taking your time out uh to do this with me and let me be part of y'all's thing uh and bows uh for being so cool to be willing to sponsor this and put this together uh, and allowing us all to connect and me getting to meet you and being able to virtually meet everybody else out there. So, hey, thank you guys. Seriously, this is an awesome thing. It's been a pleasure talking with you today and you clearly have some fans out there or you're gaining some new fans. People are sending all kinds of little, like the applause emoji that's been coming through a lot. So how... How has the pandemic affected you as far as connecting with fans? What are you, what are you having to change in order to reach that fan base? Um, I would say a lot more lives. Uh, I try mm -hmm. to answer all the DMs that we can, direct messages. Um, right now, we've been trying to pump out some more merchandise and some stuff like limited stuff, like during this yeah. time, 
try to like keep the light going. But even with the merchandise companies, they, they're kind of slow now too. And it's hard to get in contact mm-hmm. with them to create the merchandise. But I guess the best way I would say that what we're doing to try to stay connected is um, the only thing we can do. Keep writing songs, recording the songs, and putting them out digitally on Spotify and Apple Music and all that stuff. So if you guys get a chance, check us out. Uh, and we every four weeks, every month, we're dropping a new song um, all the way through 2020 and 2021. We're dropping a new song oh, every four weeks to keep people entertained, something to look forward to, something new, a way that we can connect, because that's about all that we can do on our end is, you know, follow the rules here, uh, do everything we can to help. And if we can bring more music to, to them to stay connected, that's like, that's all we got, you know? Those are, that's important. Um, important to understand how technology can connect people and why it matters, especially right now. Styles, what's ahead for you? You mentioned you're doing something pretty cool this weekend. And then you obviously just had your song released last week. Yeah. So what else, what else do you have going on? Okay, so like I said before, you know, we're constantly writing songs, and that's always fun. So I always have that work to look forward to. Uh, Eric, my manager, if you're watching, thank you, dude. You make, there's so many other people that are involved in our team that make it work. So um, I've got a bunch of new rights coming up, more in the more uh, immediate future. This Saturday, uh, like I said, it keeps going back to this military thing. I think it's awesome. Uh, this Saturday, <laughs> we're part of a social distanced um, poker run, uh, bike. We're going to play for the, you know, people social distancing on the bikes, the, uh, Harley Davidson thing. Well, Harley sponsored it. And what it is, it's called, uh, the ride, the fourth annual ride for independence here in Medina, Ohio, uh, sponsored by, uh, or put on by creative housing and sponsored by, uh, Nissan Gainley Kia. There's a bunch of awesome sponsors. Uh, one sponsor individually, uh, the local Harley Davidson, uh, sponsored uh, a bike for me to ride during the poker run which i'm excited for but what this event is saturday and if you're coming from somewhere in ohio and you want to be part of our event uh they got tickets and stuff uh it is a benefit uh uh social distance show for uh raising money for uh, individuals that are disabled but honoring all of our military men and women that have served or are currently serving our country. Uh, I know there's some cool monuments and stuff uh, uh, like the uh, Ohio Veterans Cemetery. There's like a bunch of different places we're going to be stopping uh, on the poker run to honor all of our military. So like thought it was really cool. And if uh, y'all are somewhere out in our neck of the woods, uh, get a ticket. Come say hello. We're going to be playing some more songs there. Oh, that's <laughs> great. That's so great, Styles. <laughs> That, yeah, that, that that's that's awesome uh uh so thank you for doing that you know taking time to to support in any way that you can to help those you know disabled disabled personnel and of course you know yeah. all, so we appreciate that um i think we have time for one more song one hey more absolutely song. i think i think it's called i don't even know that guy is that <laughs> and i want to i'm sorry i'm flipping through this this photo thing hang on let me see if i can find this here we go yeah, hey, there is a question out here. Uh, they want me to ask. Sally Cook asks from Fort Bragg, North Carolina, wants to know if your style is an influence of you know when your fr- when your father you know lived in Australia, with his background, the crocodile Dundee outback look. You wear it well <laughs> with the little. Oh, I will hearts. say. Uh, I will say uh, no. It was not. Not an influence of that. Uh, I was trying to find a picture to go along with this next song, but I, I think I'll, I'll just answer this question here and, uh, and keep us on time here. But uh, so no, the look as far as no, it's not. I just kind of uh, kind of <laughs> put together the style that I want that feels like it fits me. Um, and uh, so like y'all can't see these, but I do got uh, I got custom boots from Texas, uh, uh, where y'all are coming from out there in Texas. Uh, these are straight from y'all's neck of the woods. Check this out. Sweet. This is uh, a Peruku fish. Uh, they put my logo on it. And oh. Uh, yeah, so I'm a big outdoorsman. I love to hunt and fish. That's like what I live for when I'm not playing music. Um, my soon-to-be wife, I get married August 29th. Wait, uh, what? Right? What? Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I'm really excited. Uh, we bow hunt everywhere we can together. So, um you know, uh, we, we do a lot of hunting and fishing. So that's kind of what uh, this is all about. And I'll, and I'll talk about this hat a little bit too. Recently, this, uh, this hat is, uh, 
it's a, a Travis Austin custom guy in uh, in Nashville. They make he makes a lot of awesome hats like Lee Bryce and some other guys. But so on the hat here, we got uh, a turkey feather from the turkey that I harvested this spring. Uh, wow. I got a feather feather. I have a German short hair pointer that I go bird hunting with all the time. Me and my fiance go and take and run the dog. This is from one of our bird hunts. Uh, up on top of the hat here, they glued my first bear claw of the bear that I harvested in Maine. Uh, out when I'm touring, I meet a lot of people. You know, I'm a very, uh, I'm a social blood butterfly, you, you would say. And, uh, and I meet a lot of people and get a lot of cool experiences. And I try to take that advantage of that and, and hunt uh, wherever I can. So, and then on the brim of the hat here, it says, don't stay so busy, man. That they lasered into the hat. Oh, um, put, wow. a little, uh, put a little uh, bandana on the bottom for me. So yeah, that's like, um, as far as my style, it's just kind of what I've put together and thrown together that feels like me. I try not to like copy anybody or do anything. <laughs> like I just want to be me, you know, and hopefully people, people dig it, you know, and if not, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> hopefully, uh, one day you will, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, so speaking of that though, but going into this song, uh, I don't even know that guy. Uh, and this last song, like I said, I don't want to take up too much of y'all's time. Thank you again. I just want to say it. military exchange, uh, chief. Thank you so much, Julie, uh, all of the team members, Bose, everybody for being such <laughs> an awesome group of people putting this together. Thank you. Like I've had so much fun on here and, uh, and it's not just this thing, but I've learned a lot about my old man too. Yeah. It's fun. Uh, oh. and this is, uh, so this song is called, I don't even know that guy behind this song. Uh, I was looking at a picture back of myself when I was in high school and I just took that once again, the title thing, you know, said, you know, I, I mean, I don't even know that guy. Well, I took the thing down the phone and <laughs> finally we got all the writers together and this one took two writing sessions. We wrote, we wrote it and, uh, couldn't get, couldn't figure it out how we were going to make this thing, uh, work uh finally we got with we added another guy in uh mr jeremy bussey so i wrote the song uh myself uh my buddy james kelly again rob snyder uh my buddy in nashville he wrote she got the best of me for luke combs he wrote that new song six feet apart for luke combs um he's an also a writer on that and uh and uh so rob snyder and jeremy bussey we wrote this one called i don't even know that guy and still to this day i cannot believe this entire song, and I want to tell the people ahead of time because like it blew my mind how these incredible writers put this stuff together like this. Like uh, the entire song is all about a, a guy uh, sitting on a couch with his wife, flipping through photo albums like the ones that I was showing earlier of himself and not recognizing, you know, so uh, and how much he's changed. So that's the meaning behind the song, and I hope you all like this one. Here we go. God, it feels weird just sitting here, flipping through all my wild years. And I guess I went through her before I went. I was still on wheels in that red Chevrolet, bending every rule I couldn't get to break. Is you making me name? Damn, if I would have changed, that's me you never knew. Cause girl, I wonder sometimes too. Cause I don't even know that guy smiling back at me. When I look in his eye, I can tell he could see growing up, falling hard, letting some girl steal his heart like he stole mine. No, he looks like I don't even know that guy. So you ain't loose and maybe you're safe. Go ahead and laugh, baby, it's okay. Man, don't me look tough. I ain't even think about love. Guess he was too cool back then. Good thing you never met him. Cause I don't even know that guy. Smiling back at me. When I look in his eyes, I can tell he could see. Growing up, falling hard, letting some girl steal his heart like you stole mine. I know he looks like with that running wild and crazy, he can't hide. There's a million miles between him and me tonight. 
I don't even know that guy smiling back at me. When I look in his eyes, I can still even see growing up, falling off. Maybe some girl steal his heart like he was no mine. Yeah, no, he looks like I don't even know that guy. I don't even know that guy. Unmute. Sorry. Yeah, that was oh, so hey, thank wow. You. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you for premiering that for us. I'm going to call it a premiere. I don't know if it was or not, but I'm going to say it was. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I really liked that one. That one was, I, I think you're right. That message really, really resonates or will resonate with uh, our folks watching today. Yeah, and that's like, uh, just so everybody watching that one, uh, I threw that one in last minute. I wasn't originally going to play that one, but it's a brand new one, and I wanted y'all to hear it because I thought it was different, you know, a little bit. Yeah. And, uh, you know, hey, I, and I know a lot of people out there feel that same way. Like, you know, they look at a photo of themselves, like, man, what was going on there? Know, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Styles, um, you're a terrific talent. Can you... Can you let us know where we can find you on social media? And then again, where we can find your music online? Absolutely. So you can give me a follow on Instagram at styles, S-T-Y-L-E-S, Howry, H-A-U-R-Y music. Uh, same thing as Facebook and TikTok. Watch out though on the TikTok stuff. Uh, we get crazy on that. Uh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, uh, anyways, uh, no, uh, and as far as finding the music, any one of your favorite DSPs or a, a digital streaming platform, Google Play, Spotify. Oh, sorry. Oh, you're back. Yay. Yay. I'm sorry. Oh, no. You're back. You're back. My guitar player, Zach. Zach, if you're watching, you're interrupting. Twice. <laughs> twice. Twice. He interrupted me twice. There we go. He's going to continue calling me. Ahead. Do not disturb on. Um, one more time, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, it's you okay. Can find, uh, Find my music on Spotify, Apple Music, Google Play, YouTube Music, anywhere you want to find it. Even ask uh, Alexa uh, to play some style. <laughs> It'll uh, Alexa. Yeah. <laughs> so, hey, that's awesome. Hey, stick around, Styles. After we're done here, but it's been truly an honor having you with us today. Thank you for spending time with the Exchange family and sharing your music. Big shout out to Bose for making this happen. We appreciate you being uh, 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 brand partners with the exchange. Uh, this means so much to our airmen, soldiers, sailors, Marines, and Coasties, and of course, all the family members out there watching. We wish you the best as you continue your, your career. So good luck out there, all right? Exchange out. Thanks, hey, Styles. See y'all later. Much love. Stay safe out there. Bye.